What is going on guys? Victor here and today I got the three lovely ladies with me. Introduce yourselves real quick. Hey guys, I'm Brooke. Hey, I'm Emily. Hey, Chrissy. If you guys don't know, this is Brooke. She's my girlfriend right over here. She also has her own channel in the description box below. And Emily and Christine are our friends. <laughs> Emily and Brooke have actually been friends for a very long time, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> and Brooke has taken it upon herself to kind of teach her friends the ropes of fishing. She's been doing We're a pretty trying. good job. <laughs> well, we went, we went uh, snapper fishing a couple months ago, and then I wanted to take them out and go dolphin fishing, so that's what we're doing. But we haven't fed any dolphin yet, so we're actually catching a bunch of bar jacks. So I think Victor's changing his mind, and you're going to do a bar jack catch and cook. Yes, so. we are. Ladies ready? Yeah! Find them, Emily. Oh, they're over there. They're busting over there. Busting. What is that stuff? Oh, oh, they're following it. Come on. There we go. Almaco one. All right, Emily, let's see it. Let's see that jig in action. So today, guys, we're actually going to do a catch and cook with these. I've been wanting to do one for a very long time. This right here is an Almaco Jack. They are unregulated and they are very plentiful out here, mixed in with dolphin, blue runners, trigger fish, and all sorts of stuff. So let's get a cooler full of these guys. And what I'm throwing here, I got some 30 pound bull buster fluorocarbon, a voodoo shrimp, Fish love this lure right here. Kind of like a DOA, but weighted a little bit better. Better hook on it and much more durable. Pop it. Oof. There's number two, and these things are just loaded underneath the sargasm weed. And I'm pretty sure they spend their juvenile lives out here in the. Uh, out here in the blue in like 800 a thousand feet of water and then they'll go inshore you'll see them more on wrecks and stuff but right now these little guys tend to be very plentiful out here They're right here next to the boat and you just pop your shrimp and they just destroy it just like oh man they hit it four times before they get hooked damn you foul hooked them in the belly I get them for you. You hooked them like in the gill. We found the mega school of jacks. Oh, oh, oh! Come here. Wait, wait long enough. Look at this. <laughs> you got one, Emily? Yep. Hello. <laughs> uh, this one's a little small. I want to keep the bigger ones. There we go, Christine. Lady in red. It just seems too easy. It's like not yeah. fair. You toss it in and it's insta-bite. Look at that. They're like piranhas. I load up on these guys until the dolphins show up. They are like piranhas. Yeah, they are. They get a lot bigger, so distinctive features of the Almaco. They got this big bar along their eye. A lot of people call them bar jacks. They get really pale, they get really golden brown, and then they have a really high pronounced dorsal fin right here this is a fish's dorsal fin that one that sticks up along the backbone of its body and uh how you tell them apart and they got a real deep broad body see how much lighter this one is guys compared to the uh one we just caught okay. voodoo shrimp versus the almaco watch it how watch how easy it is to get these things oh bye it's almost harder not to catch one if you leave it in the water too long. As we drift off the seaweed patch, I just have to keep putting in reverse and getting a little bit closer to it because they they come out from underneath the seaweed patch towards the boat, but once we get too far away, then they all go back to towards the patch. So then I just have to keep reversing and getting back close to it once the current drifts me away. So you guys know how I'm all about keeping things and thinking outside the box and keeping fish that people normally wouldn't like these Almaco Jacks. So everyone comes out here, they spend all this money trying to catch dolphin, but you got a plentiful food source out here known as these Almaco Jacks. They're unregulated, which means you can keep two fish per person or a hundred pounds per person, whichever is greater, which we're not going to keep that many. But if you guys get skunked one day dolphin fishing, keep a cooler full of these. I'm telling you, I've tasted them before. They are just fine. 
very comparable to dolphin if not the same so we're gonna go ahead bring these guys back to the fillet table clean them up and then cook them up so let me show you guys what we got had some ice we didn't have a lot so I took some salt water which is always a good thing if you want to just get your fish nice and cold and hard and firm you just fill it up with some salt water that beautiful ocean salt water we got three decent sized gaffer mahi um, two cows and one bull and then a bunch of these almaco jacks uh, people call them bar jacks like I said guys these are very very plentiful so I'm gonna go ahead and do two catch and cook videos the video that you guys are watching right now is going to be this almaco jack catch and cook but I'm also going to be doing a catch and cook or a catch clean cook with this mahi, the three mahis that we caught in a separate video. So let's get to filleting. Alright guys, time to fillet some fish up. So as you guys see, these jacks are not very big. You do get them in that two to three pound range sometimes out there. And then like I said, on the wrecks they get a lot bigger. But as far as, you know, harvesting them, that's the thing is you can keep a hundred pounds or two fish whichever is greater so you know don't feel bad for keeping a bunch of small ones because let me tell you they are plentiful every time you go out there and like i said you know you get skunk dolphin fishing one day or you just want to try it go ahead and try them they are very tasty i just got done i actually just got done cooking and filming this video and i'm doing the voiceover for this filleting portion now and as you guys see also there's very little bloodline there's not a lot of bones they're just very easy to deal with you know uh, a simple cut down both sides you get two little fillets they're at that point where they're big enough to fillet you don't have to cook them whole and I mean really white uh, flaky firm meat got nothing bad to say about these guys and you know you get some light rods out there it's the perfect thing especially if you got kids or you know girlfriends wives you're just trying to teach them how to fish get them out there go tie a jig on their rod and boom you're gonna have I mean it's gonna be fun for them you know because they're doing it on their own you're not trolling they're involved and these little guys are extremely aggressive for their size uh, one thing I do want to try in the future is actually cooking them with the skin on because they have very thin skin and it looks pretty tasty. That's all I got for the filleting portion. I'll see you guys in the kitchen. All right, so our fish are filleted. Now it is time to whip something up in the kitchen. What I'm going to do for this dish is actually make a marsala. I love making chicken marsala, pork marsala, and I thought why not do it with fish one day. Experiment. So first thing we got going on is making a seasoned flour which com is composed of oregano, garlic powder, black pepper, and salt. Uh, about equal parts of the garlic powder and oregano, depending on how much you guys like the garlic flavor, oregano flavor, but you know, all kind of just eyeball. And I use that Wondra, it's a very fine flour, and I'm gonna use that to coat my fish. Next thing we got going on is garlic, which is gonna be used in our marsala sauce and with our mushrooms. So I got about a third of a whole head of garlic as well as some flat leaf parsley for garnish. Uh, parsley really, you know, makes the dish come to life and it's, it's just always good to have a fresh herb incorporated into your dish. Now this is the Almaco Jack Fillets and as you guys see, you know, they're kind of perfectly little portion fillets too for a one person meal. You know, if you're a bigger guy, maybe eat two of them, but they're just this perfect little fish fillet. So what we're going to go ahead and do is, and also since they're thin, they're going to cook really fast and that's why I wanted to make a marsala out of them because I knew I'm going to use the seasoned flour and they get really crispy and just get a good texture to them on the outside. So we coat them in our seasoned flour, set them aside, and then we're going to go ahead and get our pan ready. So this dish is all kind of cooked in the same pan, which is really nice because you develop a lot of flavors and it actually makes for minimal cleanup. So we got the olive oil and butter going into the pan. We are going to fry our fish first, lightly. Not too much oil, that was only about two tablespoons, one tablespoon of butter. About a minute and a half, two minutes max on each side just so they get that golden brown color that everybody loves. And you'll also see that your fillets won't fall apart if they're ready to be flipped. And how good does that look? I mean, it's making my mouth sizzle again, just looking at it. So then in the exact same pan, do not clean out that pan. Add some butter, and now I'm using two eight ounce packages, so a pound of white sliced mushrooms, as well as the garlic that we had sliced earlier. We're gonna go ahead and add that uh, until, our, un, until our mushrooms, I should say, get soft and 
you know, shrink down a little bit. Now, so the, the star of the show is the Marsala wine. This is a very, very strong flavored rich wine. So do not put too much. I did about a cup because I'm making a, a pretty big batch of fish and pasta. And then that flour we had from earlier, I went ahead and just added it to give it number one flavor and just to thicken up our sauce as well. And then chicken broth is the very last thing I add after my wine has been reduced by half. Now for the pasta of choice, you guys can use whatever you want. I love bow tie pasta. I'll use any excuse to use it. So I went with bow tie. Once our chicken broth, our wine has cooked down, added about half a stick of butter, put it in there. And then the very last thing we're gonna do is garnish our bow tie and our mushroom mixture with the sauce with some fresh parsley. One thing I wish I would have done is cook the fish back through the sauce, but I completely forgot. Garnish it with fish and you're good to go. As you guys see, my grandma's not here right now and that is because she is visiting our home country. My dad is from Slovakia and she hasn't been home in how many years? 22. 22 years for her home country, which is a huge deal. So we're all really happy for her. So she missed out on this family meal, but what did you guys think? Yeah, it was really good. The fish is very good. I thought it was really good. You've been talking about making this for what? <laughs> You've been talking about making fish marsala for a really long time and you finally did and it turned out really good. I'm a big fan of bow tie pasta, so <laughs> anything that includes bow ties is really great, but it was really good and it was something completely different. Normally you get like chicken marsala or like veal marsala. Like I don't think I've ever seen fish marsala on a menu before, so that was really great. But yeah, and the fish was really good. A white flaky fish. Yeah. I liked and it. Another one of those fish with the misconception that they're not good, you should throw them back, especially I think because everyone's out there trying to catch dolphin like we were, and there's just thousands and thousands of these jacks that you guys can catch. And like I said, if you get skunked one day, have a really good family meal, whip up something good in the kitchen, and it goes to show you that there's no such thing as fresh. Trash fish, just trash cooks. And another cool thing is to experiment with ideas like this, like the marsala, like Brooke said. I've never, I've been making pork marsala, chicken marsala for a long time, and I thought, why not make it with fish? And it turned out really, really good. Especially with these size pieces, the almicos are really nice thin fillets, so it gets really evenly coated, and you get a nice little crispy, exterior and you get the sauce it was just Definitely. all around really good i forgot to mention the mushrooms and the mushrooms Rick loves mushrooms yeah they are good so thank you guys so much for watching this video and i'll be seeing all you guys my land sharks in that next catch clean and cook